Welcome to Xinjiang. These vloggers seem to be very happy touring Xinjiang in China. Absolutely love walking through rural Xinjiang. Everyone's so friendly here. Yes, remember the controversial Xinjiang? This is the shocking research on the largest concentration camps based on religion since the Holocaust. Well, after being exposed for detaining more than one million Uyghur Muslims, suddenly these foreign travel vloggers are so eager to show to the world the other side of Xinjiang. What the hell? Gucci? BBC are not showing you Gucci in Xinjiang. That's why I need your focus, Night Fam, because we're about to investigate something very suspicious. This guy in particular is very sloppy. You can see the news crews in the background here that are busy filming him and taking photos for the local press. This is how China uses YouTube to hide Muslim concentration camps. And if you knew nothing about the oppression of Muslim Uyghurs happening there, you'd almost believe them. So guys, I wasn't expecting this at all. Here in Xinjiang, China. This isn't even the capital city. But it is amazing. The vloggers we investigated gladly show you the happy faces of the Uyghur people. Giving their vlogs the most confident titles. China sucks at genocide. I went to Xinjiang looking for repression and forced labor, but instead found this. And they think it's enough to prove their point, as long as they show Uyghurs celebrating their culture. <laughs> Proudly showcasing their products. Look at this. This is real traditional Uyghur goodies, right? And they sell it here all over. You all know that Xinjiang has got some of the best fruit around the world. And these guys prove it. And like in this one, a Uyghur family even inviting the vlogger into their home. Ladies and gentlemen, the party is heating up in this ordinary Kazakh house. Woo! That's pretty awesome. Wow, check it out. Wow, they're, ah, they're even moving a table now. Now the party starts, my friends. Let's go. Hey. Is it me or is there something really extra sad about this supposed happiness? Because just notice who's watching all of this from the background. According to the reports of a YouTuber, Serpensa, one of these vloggers was careless enough not to remove from his footage these people, who seem to be government watchers. Look here. Notice these faces, because they turn up again and again. The same faces who were following his every move. This is actually the first stop on any genocide denial tour. Here you see the uh, minders again. These are minders. They're following him around, because they're the ones who took him there. Most likely making sure he won't run into anything. They're following him around and making sure that he doesn't go off the beaten path, talk to anyone that he's not supposed to talk to, or do anything that he's not supposed to do. But see, even without these suspected minders getting caught on camera, it's still quite obvious how exaggerated these vloggers' reactions are. So why are now? They are taking a rest and everyone looks so happy. You can see it from their face. Getting excited over a very simple thing. Many of them suspiciously going the extra mile to prove how Uyghurs are not at all discriminated against. They've even got a minority's face on the money here. KFC! <laughs> KFC in Xinjiang! Look at this, my friends. Uyghur people holding the Chinese flag. I mean, really? The people in this area understand that they are Chinese. And coincidentally having the same passion to discredit people like me who investigated the horrors in Xinjiang. Those BBC journalists, Western media, they probably stayed here. But they don't show you this, do they? I highly doubt that all this false claims, claims about genocide against the Uyghurs it's not true, my friends. Listen, it's, it's absolutely 
not true. <laughs> is there one single piece of evidence that there's one million people in all of these camps? And if our suspected propaganda is not obvious enough, we found out that China-owned media channels even repost their entire vlogs. All these stories by Western media, it's just a huge ploy to try and destabilize China, to serve their own geopolitical interests. As Xinjiang Uyghur, I'm so grateful I was born in China. I hope the world peace, no war, no more lies about Xinjiang. I'd like you to know that 71% of you are watching our videos at Project Nightfall without following the page. So if you appreciate what we do, please support us and follow now. Now back to the video. No matter how biased and misinformed these happy vloggers are, you cannot erase the dark reality. Every street is a Gomei street. Because many hours away from where they chose to report about the so-called Uyghur's good life stands this highly guarded place. I wonder why there are no tours to the concentration camp itself, if it's so nice, if the Uyghurs there are so happy just dancing and living their best life. Where Uyghurs get indoctrinated into the Communist Party ideology, where their culture, language and religion are gradually erased. We were given two strict options, either become Chinese or die. With many of them being subjected to forced labor, forced abortions, sleep and food deprivation. Tell me, doesn't that remind you of something? To make things worse, we just learned that even the rest of the Uyghur population outside those re-education camps also suffer under extreme surveillance. Even this pro-China vlog cannot hide the very active police presence in Xinjiang. We're talking about CCTV cameras with facial recognition, AI emotion detectors, access to people's smartphones and financial histories. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to believe, but according to this investigation, a Chinese tech brand, Huawei, once filed for a patent on the ability to detect whether someone was Han or Uyghur. Every 200 meters would have a police checkpoint. If you're Uyghur, they stop you. So Nightfam, I hope you help me share this video to fight against the horrible treatment of Muslim Uyghurs in China. To fight against this biased content from these vloggers. My mother was taken to China's concentration camp in September 2018 and vanished since then. And let's hope that the good reality that these pro-China vloggers are claiming architecture is really beautiful will one day finally be true for everyone, no matter their religion, no matter how they look, no matter where they come from. <laughs>